Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. The truth be told is not many times, it's not all the time we feel like pressing our way any at all. In fact, sometimes you don't even feel like coming to church. And then when you do come to church, you feel like sitting. Maybe like some of you are sitting. I'm standing right now. <laughs> Uh, but the Bible encourages us that we walk not by, we walk by faith. So sometimes you lift your hands when you do not feel like, and you praise God when you come into the sanctuary. The Bible says, entering into his gates with, and into his courts with. Clap your hands, all ye lands. For the Lord is good. Amen. 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 And some persons are here. You've come with diverse needs. I was looking through the prayer needs, prayer requests. Uh, there's somebody with brain. Something is wrong with the brain requesting prayer requesting deliverance, various needs. And so we have given out the request, and persons will be praying for those prayer requests. But I'm going to ask if there's somebody in the house now, and you really need, you really need somebody to pray with you. I'm going to ask you to come. If you are, maybe you are down, depressed, Maybe you're sick. Maybe you need a job. Maybe you need to be delivered from some spiritual condition. I'm going to encourage you to come. The men over on this side, the ladies on that side. When we come to church, we come with, or we ought to come with expectation. Amen. If you come without expectation, we will liably or there's a good chance we can leave without receiving. But if we come expecting, believing, and there are persons who have needs, welcome. And then I'm going to ask the rest of us who can come now in a supportive role. We're going to stand behind these persons. And we're going to be supporting our brothers and sisters today. We're going to pray and touch God today. Amen. All of us. All of us. When Zion travails, she shall bring forth. And if you're in the audience and you have not, um, if you're still contemplating coming, whether for need or to pray with somebody, this is your opportunity. But we're going to ask that everybody now focus. No distractions. We're going to focus on us. We're going to ask the Lord. I'm going to ask our musicians, could you hold, please? Um, we're going to ask everybody in the house, everybody, to focus on what we're going. We're going to ask the Lord. Let us, let us now focus and pray. The Bible says, knock, ask, seek. Let us knock, ask, and seek. Let us pray. Let us pray. Everybody, let us pray. 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 Our Father, our Father, our Father, our Father, our Father. 
Our Father, oh Jesus. Jesus, you're touched. You're touched by the feelings of our infirmities. My God, we have come today. We have come today into your house, into your courts. We have come before you, Jesus. My Lord, you said we should ask. We should ask. We should knock. We should seek. And so we have come this morning. Lord, we are looking to you. For you are merciful. You have been good, Lord. You have been good. And we are looking to you because there are needs in the house today. There are persons who are here today. And Lord Jesus, you are the one who heal our disease. Everywhere, Lord, you went. Lord Jesus, you ministered. Oh, Jesus, everywhere you went when you walked, the shores of Galilee, you ministered, Lord, Jesus. And when your disciples failed to rely on you, you ask them, where is your faith? Oh, Lord, so today we are, we are calling on your name for your only hope. Lord, my God, oh, you have encouraged us to call on you. We are not worthy to call on you, Lord. But Jesus, you have encouraged us. And so we come as we are to confess every sin. Oh, Lord, to confess our faults. Lord, and to present ourselves before you. Oh, Lord, because we desire to draw close to you today. You know where we live. You know where, oh, God, we have been. You know our address. You know everything about every one of us here. Oh, God, none of us can pretend because you look straight through. Oh, my God, you see who we are. You know our intentions. And so as we come to you, we come, Lord. We come into your house. We come into your courts to call upon your name and to believe your word, to take you at your words, my God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That every one of us can leave here delivered. Every one of us can leave here Lord, my God, revived with a determination to walk with you. Every one of us, my God, can step out of defeat and walk in the victory. Every one of us, my God, can draw closer to you. You said the gates of hell shall not prevail. The gates of hell shall not prevail. Oh God, there is no devil or demon that can stand against you, Lord. Hallelujah. So we are here to, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are here to lift our faith. Hallelujah. And to stretch out our hand in expectation that you will, you will. You will, you will hear, you will answer. Hallelujah. Every one of us can leave here, my God, a different way. Hallelujah. Oh, dear Jesus, set everyone free. Set every captive free. Oh, dear Jesus. Oh, my God, where there is depression or sickness, where there is weakness or feebleness or lack of faith, fill our hearts with your love. Fill our hearts with your spirit. Wash us today and cleanse our hearts. My God, do your work, we pray. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Oh Lord, oh Lord, our eyes are upon you. Our eyes are upon you. Let your hand be upon the one who will be ministering, whether it be in song. Oh God, hallelujah. Minister your word today. Oh God, break down every wall, tear up every, oh God, apart every chain. And let there be liberty in your house today. That every one of us would worship with our heart from the bottom of our hearts. And oh, give the glory to your name. As we say, thank you, Lord. Oh, we say, thank you. Oh, let us lift our hands unto the Lord. And let us clap him in anticipation. Oh, hallelujah. We are the people of his name. The people of his. Oh, we are his people. The sheep of his pasture. Glory to God. You may take your seat. Amen. Keep our focus. Let's keep our focus. Amen. In Jesus' name. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Psalm 77, and we are reading from the New Living Translation. Psalm 77. Praise God. Praise God. We read from verse 1. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. I cry out to God. Yes, I shout. Oh, that God would listen to me. When I was in deep trouble, I searched for the Lord. All night long I prayed with hands lifted up toward heaven, but my soul was not comforted. I think of God and I moan overwhelmed with longing for his help. You don't let me sleep. I am too distressed even to pray. I think of the good old days long since ended when my nights were filled with joyful songs. I search my soul and ponder the difference now. Has the Lord rejected me forever? Will he ever again be kind to me? Is his unfailing love gone forever? Have his promises permanently failed? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he slammed the door on his compassion? And I said, this is my fate. The Most High has turned his hand against me. But then I recall all you have done, O Lord. I remember your wonderful deeds of long ago. They are constantly in my thoughts. I cannot stop thinking about your mighty works. O God, your ways are O holy. Is there any God as mighty as you? You are the God of great wonders. You demonstrate your awesome power among the nations. By your strong arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. When the Red Sea saw you, O oh God, its waters looked and trembled. The sea quaked to its very depths. The cloud poured down rain. The thunder rumbled in the sky. Your arrows of lightning flashed. Your thunder roared from the whirlwind. The lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your road led through the Red Sea. 
your pathway through the mighty waters, a pathway no one knew was there. You led your people along that road like a flock of sheep with Moses and Aaron as their shepherd. Praise God. Oh, we have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Fastened to the rock which, which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. Praise the Lord, everyone. Let's clap our hands to the Lord and give Him praise. Amen. Amen. Just turn to your neighbor and greet them, and you may have your seat. Sister Marsha Powell is coming to welcome us and give us the announcement for this week. Amen. 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 Praise Lord, everyone. On behalf of Pentecostal Tabernacle and Pastor of Pentecostal Tabernacle and the Saints of Pentecostal Tabernacle, we'd want to extend a warm greeting. Welcome to all our visitors and to our live stream viewers. Welcome today. Could I ask all our visitors to stand, whether it's your first time, second time, and third time, please be so kind enough to stand. Praise God. So we'd like to extend a warm greeting to you. Thank you for coming. You could have been elsewhere, but you chose to come here. I pray that when you leave here, you leave here different and with the Holy Spirit. You may be seated. All our members nearby, could you give them a handshake, please? Kindly listen to the announcements for this coming week. This evening, there is no evening service. <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow at 6 p.m. in the evening, community and extension Sunday school workers meeting. This will be on the first floor north of our administrative building. On Tuesday, at 6 p.m., we have youth service. Amen. Praise Lord, everyone. Great. On Wednesday, 6 o'clock, 6.30 a.m. is morning manor. 11.30 a.m. is prayer and fasting service. 6.45 p.m. is prayer and Bible study. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Saturday at 12 noon is the funeral service for Sister Catherine Brown. That will be held, uh, this funeral service will be held at Bethel Born Again Church of Jesus Christ Apostolic. 3 to 5 Oakland Road, Kingston 11. And at 1 p.m., funeral service for Sister Melicia Allen, the wife of Brother Paul Allen, will be held at the Potter's House, 22 Winward Road, Kingston. On Sunday, the 7th of September, 6 o'clock, rightly dividing the word on RGR Fame FM, 7 o'clock, prayer time in the sanctuary, 8 a.m. pre-session, 8.30 Sunday school, 10.15 a.m. worship service, children's church, and a teen tab, and 6.45 p.m. evening service. Today, we should be at Micah 7, and we will be, Lord willing, next week Sunday at St. John chapter 1. The Lord Jesus Christ bless you. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. Just a few reminders. Uh, funeral service on Saturday. We're asking, please, if you can give support to the family members. Amen. Uh, as you know, Brother Allen, amen, who has been giving support or giving leadership to the prison ministry, lost his wife. And that service will be at the Potter's House. Uh, that's on Winward Road. Those of us who can, you know, go, please try and give support. Amen. Amen. And Sister Catherine Brown, 
Now the directions, I was told it's across from Chisholm Avenue off Walton Park Road. Yes, so if you're finding it difficult, amen, head on to Walton Park Road and then look for Chisholm Avenue. Straight across. All right, all right. That's the best direction we can give. Amen? Amen. And if you don't know, ask a rude taxi driver when you get on Walton Park Road, and I'm sure they'll tell you. Anybody will tell you. Also, Brother Armstrong lost his dad. Amen? And I'm asking us please to pray for him and his family. Amen? Amen, amen. We're inviting our ushers to come. We'll be marching, amen? Amen. Could we just stand and bow our heads? In addition, I was told brother Andrew Thomas lost his grandmother. Sister Joyce Henry. Please, please pray for Brother Andrew and his family. Well, his mom and brother and dad. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your goodness and your mercies. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with your resources. Thank you, Lord, for an opportunity to give of those resources Lord, that you have blessed us with for the furtherance of your kingdom. Lord, we know that you love us and you care for us and you'll never leave us nor forsake us. Help us, Lord, to continue to be faithful to us, to be faithful to you, Lord Jesus. For you, Lord God, are indeed faithful to us. Every day you wake us up in the morning, there is oxygen for us to breathe. Lord Jesus, the sun comes out. The rain has been falling. We thank you so much, God, for your faithfulness towards us, even when we are not faithful. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Lord, bless us as we give so that we can give even more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please give as unto the Lord, our singers and musicians. Amen. We'll be leading us in worship as we march. Praise God. It is all right, all right. Is it all right, all right? As long as I have the Lord beside me, it is all right. As long as I have his hands to hold, as long as he watches over my Thank you. 
choir is ministering. You can be healed.
taking it down. This is not shouting today, because somebody's here. Ah, ah, the spirit of depression, the spirit of oppression, the financial situation. But God, we receive it in Jesus' name. You came here today, and you told the Lord that it's your last day. But in the name of Jesus, you know who you are. We come against the spirit of depression in this place today. The spirit of hopelessness. We curse you in the name of Jesus. We are more than conquerors. To Christ, who give us strength. We're going to rise up. It doesn't matter what you're going through. You serve a good God. You serve a great God. You serve a big God. We bind circumstances. We command. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. 
You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost today. You are brought here for a reason. Jesus, Sister Heaven, come out to the other. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Just for a minute, hallelujah. Amen. Could we all just close our eyes? Hallelujah. Amen. Just lift our hands and just breathe the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's breathe the name of Jesus. There's no other name. Hallelujah. Given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus. Let's just breathe that name one more time. Jesus. Come on, whatever you're doing, just stop and breathe the name of Jesus. Yes, one more time. Let's say Jesus. One more time. Let's say Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's just worship him. Hallelujah. Let's just worship him. Hallelujah. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Yes, Lord. You are the source of our strength. Yes, Lord, you are the strength of our life. You are our refuge, our hiding place, our strong tower. Yes, Lord, you are the rock on which we stand. Yes, Lord Jesus, you are an awesome God. You are an awesome wonder. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I know today we have worshiping with us some of our university and college students who are, will be starting school or have already started school. Amen. If you are here, 
Amen. Today, could you just stand? Amen. Whether you're visiting or not visiting. Amen. 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 Please. Amen. I want us to look around. Amen. And remember them. Amen. Amen. Remember them. Remember to pray for them. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask some of our parents to stand. Amen. If you have children who are going back to school, amen, I want you to stand. Amen. 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 I want you to remain standing just for a, a couple of minutes. Amen. I'm going to invite Brother Gary Cunningham to come. And I'm going to ask him just to pray for you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's lift our hands and praise the Lord one more time. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. And we're all going to be praying for our parents our parent who have children, our child going back to school. We know how difficult it is, but we know we have a great God. Amen? We have a great, big, wonderful God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are our God, and the earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. Great God, we know you as the Savior. We know you as deliverer. We know you as the father of all fathers. We know you, great God, as hallelujah, our healer. We know you, great God, as the comforter. And Lord God, today, Lord God, we are expressing that we know you as the provider, great God of heaven. Hallelujah. You are not a magician. You're able to do exceeding abundantly above what we're able to ask or think, great God Almighty. And if we only believe, you said, all things are possible to them that believe. So we lift up our eyes unto the ills today, from whence cometh our help. Our help cometh from the Lord, mm -hmm. you Lord, which made heaven and earth. We'll bless you at all times, great God. And praise shall continually be in our mouth to love and adore you, great God and mighty. Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we're living in difficult times. And it's been difficult for many, great God and mighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even just great God and mighty to have a meal, it is difficult these days. But great God and mighty, you stand supreme in all of this. And today, great God Almighty, in spite of the challenges that we have been facing, in spite of the economic crunch, great God, you're still the provider. And you're able to do more than we can ask of you or think. Today, great God, we have parents and parents here, great God. Hallelujah. Who some of whom are here today are challenge with the fact that they're not able to provide great God the wear it all for their child or for the children great God school fees need to be paid great God almighty books need Lord God to be purchased and still bags and uniforms great God and you know the rest of it oh God almighty we come in a practical way believe in great God because for most of us we have proven you time and time before. And know, Lord God, that even when it seems late, you can never be late. You are always on time. You are that kind of a God. And so today, great God, we are not here crying out to you in hopelessness. But we are crying out to you because you said we are to ask. You said we are to knock. 
You said we are to see, and we are doing just that today. Great God and mighty, not one person here, Lord God, today. Hallelujah. Not one, Lord God, has not been on your mind. Not one of us here, great God, who are going through our struggles. You, Lord God, have not given thought to. And so right now, great God Almighty, our main desire is that we are in your will. Our main desire is that we are serving you and putting our trust in you. And we know some trust in chariot and some in horses. But we remember the name of the Lord. We pray today, great God Almighty, that you will undo every burden. That you'll loose the bond of wickedness. That you'll break every burden barricade that the enemy has set up great God that you will release that check right now that you'll cause that person in England or America or Canada to send that money great God through Western Union that you'll release whatever needs to be released so that your people Lord God who are called by your name and who have humbled themselves and pray and seek your face and turn from their wicked way will receive from you here today we pray that the doors be opened up great God Almighty, that your people will be blessed, great God Almighty, that you'll open the windows of heaven and pour upon your people a blessing that you'll not have room to receive. We pray Lord God Almighty that you will move uh, every sad news right now, remove the darkness and turn the darkness into day, great God, the weeping and mourning into dancing. Lord God, weeping, Lord God Almighty has gone on for too long. But we are receiving the joy that comes in the morning. You know it's not by might or by power. It is by your spirit. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, great God. And it is not dependent upon the rise and fall of the dollar. But you, Lord God Almighty, you're in charge. And you're able, Lord God, in any situation to bring about a miracle. You are our solution here today. And we cry out to you, great God. Every child will go to school. Every need will be supplied. We are saying it in agreement, great God. And if two shall agree touching any matter, Lord, we know, Lord God, that you're in the business of agreement. And there are more than two of us here. One shall chase a thousand. And two shall put ten thousand to flight. Wrap your arms around your people today. Give them the reassurance that it needed at this time, great God. And Lord God, we know help is on the way. And even tomorrow, great God, a phone call. Even tonight, great God. Yes, Jesus, because you are the provider. Yes, great God, someone will receive something in their account. Yes, Lord, someone will receive, Lord God, through the remittances. Yes, Lord, someone will receive from you because you are our God forever. Have your way, Lord God Almighty. I pray that your children, Lord God, will receive your blessing for this term, great God, that you will guide and protect. Lord Jesus, we are living in perilous times. We pray, Lord God, that you'll protect our children. Those, Lord God, who are going to university, we pray, Lord God, that they will keep, Lord God, standing. Lord God Almighty, before you upright and to carry your name wherever they go. We pray, Lord God, that you'll move, Lord God, with them. Lord God, in all through whatever curriculum, whatever program, Lord God, but that your name will be lifted up in everything that we do. Lord God, we thank you for hearing us. We thank you for what you're doing right now. We thank you for the provision that you have made. We thank you for the phone call that we are going to receive. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you're doing. And we're rejoicing in the fact, Lord God, that our voices are heard, great God, and that you are the God who answers and answers by fire. Do, Lord God Almighty, what you have been doing all throughout our life. Do it again, we ask simply, in the name which is above every name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's truly thank him. Thank him. Let's truly thank him. Hallelujah. Let's truly thank him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to ask you please to remain standing or stand. Amen. We've come time 
for us to hear the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hear what the Lord has to say for us for today. Amen. I want to invite, amen, Brother Leonard Smith to come and he will be speaking to us today. Amen. Let's just welcome him by just saying praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift your hands just one more time in the presence of the King. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory, hallelujah, glory, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glorify your name. It's just a good thing to be in the presence of the King. It's just a good thing. Hallelujah. To be in the house of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Hallelujah. If you feel blessed, glorify your name, Jesus. If you feel privileged, hallelujah, glorify your name, Jesus. Just honor the presence of God in your life. Hallelujah. This is a personal God. Hallelujah. And a personal walk. Glorify your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glorify your name. You have your Bibles with you. This afternoon, just turn with me to the book of Mark. Mark chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. Hallelujah. 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 And I'm going to invite just a sustained, worshipful atmosphere. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Glorify your name, Jesus. Mark chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. Glorify your name. And we're just going to read together after 2. 1, 2. Now after that, John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Uh, the middle phrase in verse 15, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. And I'm reading Hebrews 10, 11 verse 10 in your hearing. It simply says, For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Hallelujah. Let us just bow our heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, no other name we know. At your name, demons tremble. Lord Jesus, you Hallelujah, God, are seeing in the realm, oh God, that we cannot see right now. And Lord Jesus, hallelujah, you are seeing the war that is raging, God, on the insides. Oh God, we are putting our best foot forward, God. But you know, Jesus, glorify your name, God, hallelujah, that there is an opposition in the house uh, this morning. And we pray right now in the name of Jesus against every lying spirit. Uh, 
Lord, glorify your name, Jesus, against every foul spirit, uh, against every dragon, Lord God, hallelujah. We come mightily in your authority, Jesus, uh, to declare your kingdom, Jesus, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. We claim it and consider it done. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus name. glorify your name. You may be seated. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I don't know, my calm disposition is betraying something that is going on very deep inside. And there is a very serious war raging in my spirit. Glorify your name, Jesus. There's a very serious conflict that is just, ah, uh, it's, just, it's just giving me a warm time. And I'm going to beseech your intercession right now. Glorify your name, Jesus. Glorify your name, Jesus. Because the time that we are living in, glorify your name, Jesus, demands that we have a full appreciation of the kingdom of God at this time. Is that all right? And my thought to you this morning, praise God, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Praise God. When we are taught the one prayer, praise God, in Matthew chapter 6 and a couple of other chapters in the Gospels, uh, the Bible gives us the first request, praise God, that Jesus invites us to ask. Praise God. After we have given him the glory and the honor, praise God, the first request is, thy kingdom come. I believe that this request that God had placed in the word of God, amen, allows us to understand the importance of us realizing that we must always be seeking for the kingdom of God to come. For the kingdom of God to dwell in our midst. Glorify your name, Jesus. And I believe he also asked us to pray concerning this issue because he knew, praise God, the opposition and the enemies that would come up against the kingdom of God in the earth. Can somebody worship him? I would to God that we would understand, praise God, that outside of the kingdom, our coming here would be in vain. Praise God, outside of the existence of the kingdom of God, we will all be just religious and we'll all be just going through the motion. Glorify your name, Jesus. And if we make the mistake to miss the kingdom of God, glorify your name, Jesus, we would have made a fatal mistake glorify your name Jesus but saints of God there is a challenge there is a challenge when it comes to this discussion concerning the kingdom of God it seems to be a mystery still in the minds of many folks and if we are not too careful, we may think that we stand and believe that we are in the kingdom of God. But we are not standing in the kingdom of God. We are standing somewhere else. Praise God. And we need to understand that the mysteries of the kingdom of God is revealed. Praise God. And that understanding and knowledge is for us to possess. Is there still a worshiper in the house? Just lift your hands just one time. Glorify your name, Jesus. Glorify your name, Jesus. And I speak in the context of our current religious climate. I speak in the context of our current uh, Christian uh, environment. Where everyone seems to be a Christian. Everyone and his neighbor seems to be a Christian. Glorify your name, Jesus. I speak in the environment, praise God, where everyone seems to be able to do miracles. And he and speak in tongues glorify your name Jesus and somehow we wonder why praise God even in the church of the living God we can't get people to forgive their neighbors still uh oh uh oh glorify your name Jesus glorify your name Jesus so the Bible in Matthew chapter 13 gives us a synopsis Praise God that allows us to understand the nature of the kingdom. 
Jesus Christ describes several parables. Praise God. And he spoke to his disciples in parables. Praise God. And sometimes we get troubled just like the disciples then when they asked him, Lord, why are you speaking to us in parables? Why don't you just speak to us plainly so that we can understand what this thing is? Glorify your name, Jesus. But I would like somebody to understand that because of the nature of the things of the kingdom it was prudent for Jesus Christ to speak in parables glorify your name Jesus why is this necessary you see the kingdom of God the Bible says is neither meat nor drink but righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Ghost in other words it is not physical praise God first and foremost glorify your name Jesus the kingdom of God is first of all possessed in the spirit for my Bible tells me that God is a spirit glorify your name Jesus and if we're going to worship God if we're going to live for God we've got to do it in the spirit glorify your name Jesus but we need to understand that flesh and blood can't possess the kingdom your carnal mind can't grasp the things of the kingdom so readily glorify your name Jesus ah, because it's creating an enmity between you and your flesh so God had to use parables to kind of tease us because you see when God speaks in parables it's like a mystery and then because you are hungry or if you are hungry for spiritual understanding then you will begin to seek after the spiritual things you see the parable is like a mystery and you want to understand it so you begin to pull away from yourself your carnal thinking and you begin to think and work it out what could this parable mean but people who love this world they're not gonna go down that road that's how it works those who are already contented glorify your name Jesus and satisfied in their flesh they would perceive all of this as foolishness listen to me man my BSc and my PhD has brought me here you religious zealots what is this thing that you doing cause speaking in tongues it is foolishness glorify your name Jesus but the carnal man I said the carnal man I'm no part no lot in this and dare I go say that even we in the church if we are not too careful we can get caught up in our carnal minds you full of the Holy Ghost you have not left your carnal mind behind you've got to fight and wrestle and wrestle flesh against spirit and spirit against flesh and the two will always be contrary so if you want to get into the realm of the spirit you've got to fast in this or three days or seven days you've got to slay self you've got to die to self so that you can perceive the kingdom of God is there still a worshiper in the house? I said, is there still a worshiper in the house? Glorify your name, Jesus. Intellectualism is not spirituality. And let me be careful here. You can be so intellectual about the word of God. And theological about the word of God. Glorify your name, Jesus. Ah, glorify your name. So that you feel you have an answer to all of the things of the word. And yet still miss the kingdom. Mercy. Lord of mercy. You feel like you've got this thing down pat. Ah, uh, you just know the right kick. And you just know the right speak. 
glorify your name Jesus and you've got this thing down pat so you know how to work when you come into church and you know how to look the part and to look the role but yet still yet still you have no presence of God in your life the anointing like kings glorify your name Jesus like Samson has departed so you come and you shake glorify your name Jesus but somehow that shake is not an anointed shake that shake is not a Holy Ghost shake that shake is out of practice and repetition but come on somebody while you are stuck in your modus operandi the world is ever changing and the enemy is changing his tactics so if you don't see when the Holy Ghost going right glorify your name Jesus and say no it's time to stop doing that and start doing this come on somebody you need to understand why we walk in the spirit why the Bible says we not ought to walk in the spirit is there still a worshiper here I said, is there still a worshiper here? Glorify your name, Jesus. It can't always be business as usual. Sometimes the Holy Ghost goes to preach the word. And sometimes the Holy Ghost goes to don't say a word. Oh, come on, somebody. Sometimes the Holy Ghost goes to choir, sing that song. And sometimes you're going to come with a song prepared. And the Holy Ghost says, no, not that one. Give me another one. Give me this one. Glorify your name, Jesus. Oh, thank you, God. That's why we need to appreciate being in a church and in a house. Glorify your name, Jesus. Where the head of the church is Jesus Christ, the righteous. I don't know about you, but on Christ. I said on Christ, the solid rock, I stand all, all, all of the ground is sinking sand. Oh, glorify your name, Jesus. Don't give me no silver, no gold. I'd rather have this Jesus. Is there a worshiper in the house? I feel the Holy Ghost. I glorify your name, Jesus. Want to story of something in somebody's life. You're still going through the cycle of motion. But somehow the breakthrough is always, it seems always to be just around the corner. It just seems always to be just around the corner. But I'm here to declare. I glorify your name, Jesus, that the God of a breakthrough is in the house. The God of a breakthrough is in the house today. Is there a worshiper in the house? In Matthew chapter 13, there are seven parables that describe what this kingdom should look like. Glorify your name, Jesus. The first parable, and this is the root, praise God, to understanding the nature of the kingdom. When you say, Lord, thy kingdom come, you must know what you're asking God for. Amen. You must understand what you're asking God for. Glorify your name, Jesus. The first one was the parable of the sower. Glorify your name, Jesus. That was spoken in a mystery. And this parable, praise God, it simply means, great, great God, that the mystery of the kingdom, the kingdom, praise God, hallelujah, uh, is described as the ministry of the word. Come on, somebody. The ministry of the word or the sowing of the seed, praise God. And it describes, praise God, this kingdom as being the ministry of the word sown on different types of soils. Praise God, glorify your name. And you will not pick it up readily, 
But Matthew chapter 13 speaks of a time period as well. In several of the prophecies uh, or the parables, uh, it ends with an, a, a judgment. Praise God. It ends with a judgment. And Jesus starting the parables, praise God. The kingdom of heaven is likened, praise God, can be understood to mean the kingdom of heaven is, uh, praise God, hallelujah. It's like that to come, or praise God, or like, uh, or becoming like, or will become like, praise God. So there's a beginning, praise God, to the parables, praise God, and it gives a time period. Glorify your name. Stick a pin right there. Praise God. So the parable of the sower. Praise God. The Bible said the soil is prepared differently. Or it is understood to mean that the seed is sown in different types of soils. Praise God. And the word praise God. It described as being opposed by three things. The word is opposed by the world. The word is opposed by your flesh. Praise God. And the word is opposed by the devil. We're describing the kingdom. Glorify your name, Jesus. A second description of the kingdom the Bible speaks of is the parable of the wheat and the tares. And it describes this kingdom as, praise God, hallelujah, the sowing of the true word versus the sowing of false word. Praise God. Hallelujah. And that the two are going to be growing together. So in the kingdom you're expecting to see, praise God, those who are growing in the true word of God. And those who are growing in the false word of God. And the two exist side by side. So you should never be deceived. I'll glorify your name, Jesus. When you see all sorts of things happening, even in church. Come on, somebody. Glorify your name, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. At the end, amen, of this, praise God, growing of wheat and tares. Praise God. The Bible describes that there will be a judgment at the end of the age. Praise God. Hallelujah. Those who are evil, praise God, or the wheat, amen, will be taken up and destroyed. And the tear, uh, or, the, or the other way around, the tares will be destroyed and the wheat, praise God, glorify your name, Jesus. Ah, God will be blessed by God. And number three, praise God, the parable of the mustard seed. It described another nature of the kingdom Praise God of God. Amen. The kingdom of God is described as being as a mustard seed. It had a small insignificant beginning. But when it is finished, it is grown like a huge tree and the birds perched therein. Praise God. So in the nature of the kingdom, it started. Uh, glorify your name as one uh, coming in a manger. Praise God. Not coming on a throne. Praise God. But look at what the blessings of God has done in the world. Praise God. Everywhere. Praise God. Praise God. Even those who have no relationship with God. Talk about Jesus. Come on, somebody. And the whole world is being blessed. Praise God in this nature of this kingdom. Glorify your name. A fourth description. Praise God. The kingdom is described as leaven hidden in a meal. And this just describes the nature of how this kingdom will grow and flourish. Uh, the parable describes as a, a, a leaven is put in a meal, uh, praise God, and the meal and the leaven just spreads throughout the entire meal. This kingdom, unlike other kingdoms, most other kingdoms are established by wars and conflicts and great armies. But this kingdom is established differently. This kingdom is, is, is flourished and grows from the inside out. Not from the outside in. 
So it starts with something on the inside. A seed that is planted on the inside. Glorify your name. And the seed begins to just push out. Glorify your name, Jesus. And explodes until you can't keep it to yourself. You've got to tell somebody else. Oh, glorify your name, Jesus. One song where I said, look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. That's the nature of this kingdom. It is not like those other kingdoms. It's not a political kingdom. Don't want to go down there, so come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. It's not a political kingdom. Glorify your name, Jesus. You can possess this kingdom. Glorify your name, Jesus, without an election. Come on, somebody. Be not deceived. Come on, somebody. You can find yourself in the kingdom of God. Glorify your name, Jesus. And your church don't even have to have a name. Uh-oh. You think politics is out there so alone? Come on, somebody. You've got to be aware. Glorify your name, Jesus, of the kingdom in order to possess the kingdom. Because glorify your name, Jesus, if we are not too careful, pride can take up all of us. And before you point the finger and say, look out there, three more fingers coming right back at you. Oh, come on, somebody. Glorify your name, Jesus. So we need to know what the kingdom is in order to possess the kingdom. Number six, the, the, the parable is described, or the kingdom is, is described. Or number five, the parable of the hidden treasure. The kingdom is described as a hidden treasure where a man having found this hidden treasure went away and he purchased the field that the hidden treasure was in. Glorify your name, Jesus. And as I go along, I want you to understand that this is describing all of these parables are actually describing different types of kingdoms and the different nature of the kingdom. Glorify your name, Jesus. And it's important that we understand that the kingdom does not have one nature. And you need to understand the nature of the kingdom that you are in, the nature of the kingdoms that may have passed, and the nature of the kingdom that is to come. That's how you're going to understand what you're asking for when you say to the Lord, thy kingdom come. So this parable speaks of the man who bought the field that had this hidden treasure. This hidden treasure, praise God, is understood to mean the children of Israel. And we will not go into a Bible study on this subject Praise God for the purposes of this lesson, of this message. We only need to understand that there are different types of kingdoms. Glorify your name, Jesus. And so this man went and he bought, not the, he, did, it, he did not purchase the treasure. He purchased the land that had the treasure. And that treasure remains hidden, praise God, on that land. He knew that the treasure was there. That's why he bought the land. He knew the value of it, so he bought the land, and he has reserved, praise God, this property for himself. Then it went on to the parable of the great pearl. Glorify your name, a pearl of great price. Amen, the Bible describes. But in this instance, when the man found the pearl of great price, he actually bought the pearl. He bought the pearl for himself. Praise God. And that pearl 
should be understood to represent the church. That both the property, by the way, and the pearl was bought by the blood of this man. It was purchased with the blood of this man. Glorify your name, Jesus. One he reserved, praise God, hallelujah, his hidden treasure on the property. And the next he bought for himself. He bought it personally and directly. And he has it in his possession. Can somebody worship him? And the last description of the parable, praise God, is a parable of a fishing net. Praise God, where the parable describes, uh, amen, a man casting a net into the sea and pulling up all sorts of fishes. And then when he pulls his fish uh, net in, praise God, he began to separate the good fish from the bad fish. This speaks to another parable or another nature of the kingdom. It is believed or accepted by many folks uh, that because this net was cast into the sea, praise God, that this net is fishing out the nations. And we have references, uh, praise God, where the nations shall be judged. Uh, glorify your name and there will be a king over nations. Glorify your name. So for the purposes of our message here a kingdom is just any place uh, praise God under the dominion of a king so you know that you can have several types of kingdoms glorify your name Jesus so the question is glorify your name what then is the kingdom that we are praying for given the description praise God of various scenarios concerning the kingdom of God when you look in the scripture, praise God, you see descriptions of the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. I'm going to ask you not to make too much of the difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. Because they are used interchangeably in scripture. Glorify your name, Jesus. And only the context will be able to tell you which type of kingdom is being referred to. Is that all right? glorify your name so what you need to appreciate uh, is just all the ways that kingdom is used in scripture and then you can sift uh, to find which one applies to you and there are seven ways the first four you can imagine are pretty simple one of them is simply the universal kingdom the Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell in it. It also says, praise God, the heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. So there is a kingdom, praise God, the entire realm of existence, praise God, is one type of kingdom. Because God rules in the kingdom of men. Glorify your name, Jesus, he rules in the heavens and he rules in the earth and never find yourself in a situation where you feel that God has lost control. No matter how much earthquake, no matter how much storm, no matter how much wars, no matter how much rumors of wars, God is still in control. God still rules in the kingdom of men if he did not then he would not be God is there still a worshiper in the house we are trying to find and narrow it down oh glorify your name Jesus the Bible describes another type of kingdom the kingdom of the Gentiles or the kingdom of Gentile nations King Nebuchadnezzar for example was a great king and he had a kingdom come on somebody come on somebody so we talk about Gentile kingdoms and I would to God that you will be spiritually discerning King Nebuchadnezzar is 
dead and gone long time. But there are Gentile kingdoms that have power and authority still in the world today. Is there a worshiper still in the house? Let me allow you to be reminded that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Those spirits that control territories and kingdoms and nations. So when you go and you feel like you want to take up a placard, I say you want to protest against the system, you're in denial of the true kingdom of God. You cannot come against these Gentile kingdoms with your placards. That's not your warfare. Oh, 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 oh. You cannot come against the systems of the Gentile kingdoms. Come on, the way the Gentiles do. Oh, me now get no peer raise. Lord of mercy. 3% is not good enough. Listen to me. Not a work today. Not a work today. We're going on work to rule. We're going on strike. Let me tell you something. You can go ahead and do it. You're not going to fall off a cliff and die. But I'm telling you something. Lord God Almighty, you're wasting your power. You're wasting your authority. Glorify your name, Jesus. I feel like I'm going to put out a church tomorrow. Glorify your name, Jesus. I say you're wasting your authority. Glorify your name, Jesus. Did we not see before that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof? So how before you go on your knees and start to bind up kingdoms and principalities, you go join your unsaved co-workers. Then when they look on you, who are principalities and demons, demons under your feet or so you say glorify your name Jesus sharing their frustration in that kind of a way we all get frustrated but come on somebody there is a different type of authority and a different type of power and a different type of force glorify your name Jesus ah that is availed to you but I'm not there yet I come in come on touch your neighbor and say I come in glorify your name Jesus but they are still there glorify your name the oppressor is still there ah God almighty the taxation ah glorify your name the boss fear thing ah come on somebody ah being ruled and governed by Gentile authorities. Glorify your name, Jesus. The Bible describes the kingdom of Israel and the kingdom of Judah separately. And it treats this kingdom, which was one broken up into two, but it treats them synonymously and uniquely. That this kingdom was called out as a people in the natural world for God's name. So, when you hear all of this talk, you know, I feel like I'm going to get put out of church tomorrow. I just feel it. When you hear all this talk about a godly nation. Jamaica is a nation for God. This is the this is, the, this is God's people. Come on, somebody. There is only one natural nation on the earth identified as God's nation and God's people. And that is the nation of Israel. And likely the nation of Judah. All the other nations can only get their blessing off of that one nation. And the only way to get your blessing of that one nation is to pray for the peace of Israel. So if your Gentile kingdom leader agrees on the side of Israel, they get a blessing with God. They get favor, the natural kingdom. So your natural leaders, politicians, whoever, if they side with Israel and Judah, so when you're listening out for the war, in Israel, and how Israel put in fire 
to some tail over there. Make sure you know which side you're upon. You need to know as a nation which side you're on. But prepare for the fire. Prepare for the fire. Because the Israel of nations, enemies. You think gunman body in Jamaica? You must see them kind of man there. A which gunman you know go walk on and bomb up himself. Say him I kill people. He no go so here, sir. No, we no reach there so yet. That kind of wicked deck we can't even imagine. Come on, somebody. So when the Bible says all that a man had, he would give for his life. And yet you have a man who would give, give, give up his life for, for 72 what? Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Glorify your name. So you understand the nature of two secular type of kingdoms. The kingdom of Gentiles. Glorify your name of which we are one. Sorry. Come on somebody. So the hope and the godly hope that we have here is the hope of your salvation. So tell somebody run come quick. Come. Come. Glorify your name Jesus. There is. Glorify your name Jesus. A fourth one, which is the kingdom of Satan. The kingdom of Satan. The realm of Satan's dominion, rulership, leadership, authority. Unless you be mistaken, this entire natural realm of this world that we live in is still the natural dominion of the devil. Lord of mercy. So I went, went and I got, so I went and I felt that I was stepping up in life and I buy my car. And I felt that I was being so efficient. But let me tell you something. The amount of money that I spend for some things, I feel guilty. I feel robbed and deceived. I don't trust no bank, no NCB, no Scotia Bank. Me say, listen to me, man. All of them are controlled under a system glory, that is meant to oppress. I said, listen to me, no matter with the sweet talk. And them come with all the sales pitch. Let me tell you something. You are feeling it. It is going to oppress you until Shiloh comes. It must happen. It's so we have to go. Because the Bible did say that we're going to get blessed. And this is the blessing. But it's going to come with suffering. Why? Because this is not yet. This is not yet. The kingdom that you are praying for. So go ahead. Get the Lexus and the Bima. Go right ahead. But let me tell you something. There is a price to pay. And there's a kingdom price. So let me tell you something. Don't get caught up in it. Don't get caught up in it. Now the kingdom that I want us to appreciate. So I'm coming right to you now my brother. There is also a kingdom. Which is a spiritual kingdom. Spiritual kingdom. This is the kingdom that when the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Come on, somebody. When the Bible also says, glorify your name. What good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? This is describing a kingdom that is glorify your name, Jesus. That's going to come. This is the eternal kingdom where men reside in the presence of the Lord. All rebellion is ceased. No more tears. Come on somebody. No more sorrow. No more pain. No more heartache. You go run faster than me, I'm sure. Oh, come on, somebody. No more of that. This is, I'll oh, glorify your name, Jesus. The kingdom of God's complete dominion and authority. Glorify your name, Jesus. 
and in this kingdom praise God hallelujah glorify your name everything that is not of God will cease so this is the kingdom when you are caught up together in the air come on to meet the Lord in the air ah that's where you're going this is also the same kingdom where Abraham and the prophets of old when they went praise God into that place called paradise after Jesus finished him thing they also end up there ah, glorify your name all those who believed in the king that was to come that's where they're gonna be that's kingdom number five. Kingdom number six. The millennial kingdom. There's going to be a kingdom. So we talk about the natural Israel and the natural uh, Gentiles. Uh, glorify your name. There's going to come a time when God had to fulfill his natural promise. Praise God that he made to Abraham and to David. And he's going to establish a literal kingdom. Just the other day, somebody came into my lab. And I don't know how they smell me out sometimes. He just came in, in the middle of his working. So, Mr. Smith, what do you think about? And he went into a discussion about who is going to be in the kingdom and the millennial kingdom and where the Old Testament saints are going to be. But let me tell you something. There will be a natural kingdom. It is promised to the children of Israel. And there are folks even within us or among us who may question that. Glorify your name, Jesus. But we're not in the debate. Come on, somebody. Glorify your name, Jesus. So the Bible says of the increase in Isaiah 9 verse uh, 7 of the increase of his governance uh, and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice and from henceforth forevermore the zeal of the Lord this was speaking praise God uh, of Jesus Christ himself for unto us a son uh, 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 you know that verse glorify your name Jesus so there's gonna come but then I started to look and I started to wonder because that one is to come the millennial kingdom is to come oh glorify your name Jesus and there's gonna come a time when our tears shall be wiped away yes there are some kingdoms here but I am not a Jew glorify your name Jesus and oh God Almighty God knows I'm a Gentile glorify your name Jesus I glorify your name Jesus but somehow those don't need meet my need somehow I'm wondering Lord, how long will it be if that kingdom that is to come is mine? Then, Lord, all I feel like saying is, how long will it be? Lord God, how long till my change comes? But let me tell you something, child of God. Listen to me. There is another type of kingdom. I glorify your name, Jesus, that the prophets did not see there is another place another realm of God's dominion ah that Abraham did not see that the prophets did not see glorify your name Jesus that the Bible says oh glorify your name it is it has come it is present this kingdom is a rebellious kingdom though Oh, glorify your name. David said, why do the heathen rage? And the kings, oh, glorify your name, Jesus. And the people imagine a vain thing. It's a troublesome kingdom. Oh, for the kingdom of God in this realm, it suffers violence. And the violent take it by force. Glorify your name, Jesus. This kingdom is a difficult kingdom it's a kingdom 
that is full of doubt. For who has believed our report? Oh, these are the people in the kingdom. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Oh, glorify your name, Jesus. This kingdom is a Samphai kingdom. Glorify your name, Jesus. For in this kingdom, there are teachers with itching ears, teaching things, even the very doctrines of devils. Glorify your name, Jesus. It's a dangerous kingdom to be in. But let me tell you something else about this kingdom. Despite all of the rebellion, despite all of the trials, it is still a true kingdom with a true king, a righteous king, a holy king, a gentle king, yet a powerful king, a merciful king. And this is the same king that was referred to in Isaiah. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. And the prophecy is true that the government shall be upon his shoulder. Oh, come on, somebody. Glorify your name, Jesus. This king, glorify your name, Jesus. He came wrapped in swaddling clothes and came in a manger. So when the kingdom was like a mustard seed, he came simple, but his power spread throughout the realm of dominion, of his dominion. And let me tell you something, the prophet did not see, because when he came on the world, they were looking for another kingdom. They were looking for the kingdom where uh, he would come and destroy the enemies of Israel. That was the kingdom they were looking for. They were looking for the king to come and to sit upon the throne. Uh, God Almighty and deliver them from their enemies. But let me remind us again that God is a spirit. Come on somebody. And your reward is more than money. It is more than silver. It is more than gold. So they didn't see that they would reject this king when he came. And when they reject him, the Bible says he was in the world. And the world was made by him. The world knew him not. He came to his own. And his own received him not. But as many. I said but as many. I said God had to make a detour from the original kingdom plan because the original kingdom plan saw a group of people that didn't have straight nose them fierce never brown they could not be Levites oh, come on somebody God saw that there was somebody who would be down at East Street who would be burned out by fire God looked down the realm of time on beast and street and see some people running up and down trying to make life but life can't make he saw some people on child street and he saw their suffering and he said no 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 something must be wrong for I am God and the Bible says that God is no respecter of persons what he has done for others is gonna do for me and he saw in the realm of time that he had to make a detour so he said all right Israel you're not ready for me yet you shall be my in treasure I'm gonna keep you in my field and hold you for a time 
him and I'm going to look for a prize. I'm going to look for a prize. A pearl of great price. A pearl without spot. A pearl without blemish. A pearl that needs to be molded. For you know how a pearl come about over many years. It just starts at a little thing and then it begins to grow and grow and get molded and God saw that there was a pearl of great price and he needed to do something is there still a worshiper in the house I said is there still a worshiper in the house there is still something that God needs to do. Ah, he saw when he looked down there. Ah, that this was a part of the kingdom of the devil's domain. He saw that this was a part of the devil's domain. So he had to do something. He had to do something to get in on the action. So even though this is the realm of the devil's domain, because I'm not God's fault, but my fault and your fault. For when we were given dominion, oh, we forsook dominion. Oh, glorify your name, Jesus. And there's a price to pay for rebellion. But God is a merciful God. And he said, listen, I'm going to do something. And so he stepped out of the dominion. His universal dominion. And stepped into the realm of the demonic dominion. And he said, listen, you laid their burden on my shoulders. I am come to buy this great pearl with a price far above rubies. And he came and somebody sing the song all the way to Calvary. He went for me. I said he went for me. And now he set me free. Let me tell you something. I see some folks in some nice shirt and tie. But if you see uh, who you are uh, uh, glorify your name Jesus uh, and what you really are uh, you would know uh, the price that God really paid is there still a worshiper in the house is there still a worshiper in the house? I'm here to declare to somebody. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what kind of a heartache. I don't know about your school fee situation. Or your children's education. I'll glorify your name. And it seems like we're in a realm where the devil is still running rampant. And have his way. Uh, but I'm here to declare clear to you that there is a kingdom uh, glorify your name Jesus that remains in the world that is dominated by God for I heard John on the Isle of Patmos say and I heard and I heard a loud voice saying now is come not the one that is coming at the end not the millennial one no 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 now right now I'm here to declare to somebody that there is a now kingdom that there is a today kingdom that there is an immediate kingdom not tomorrow for now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of God and the power of the Christ for the accuser of the brethren is cast down he's cast down is there a worshiper in the house he is cast down he is cast down and we are living right now in the now kingdom the kingdom where God had established an authority not in parliament no 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 not in the seats of religious authority oh glorify your name Jesus but in the seat of the authority of the church of the living God 
so we can declare on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell I said the gates of hell shall not prevail there is a now deliverance there is a now healing there is a now salvation I glorify your name Jesus there is a king who is available now who sits on the throne he sits high and he looks low and he has come glorify your name Jesus and you can call upon him when you need him is there still a worshiper in the house is there still a worshiper in the house glorify your name Jesus this kingdom glorify your name you don't need money you don't need silver or gold all you've got to do is just open up your heart for this king is already here I said all you've got to do is open up your heart for this king is already here lift your hands and worship him glorify your name Jesus glorify your name Jesus there is still a realm of God's authority and God's dominion. There is still a realm of God's power. It is right here. Yes, the rapture is going to take place down there. But what about now? What about my current situation? What about my current life? What about my current sorrow? Let me tell you something. Glorify your name, Jesus, that all, the Bible says, as many, as many as receive him. This is a realm and a kingdom that you receive by faith. This is a kingdom that you possess. Glorify your name, Jesus, through trust. Praise God in the king. Glorify your name, Jesus. And all you've got to do is to surrender today. If you have not yet repented, if you have not yet yielded, if you have not yet known the authority and the power that lies in the God of this kingdom, you can know him today. When you repent of your sins, glorify your name, Jesus. You shall receive power. The Bible said after that the Holy Ghost is come unto you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. If you are here this afternoon and you're wondering, yes, heaven is there. And I hear all this fancy talk. But what about me? I'm here to remind somebody that the king is here. The king is here. Somebody said, God is already here I said he's already here and all you've got to do is to open up your heart for God is already here you don't have to get confused oh glorify your name Jesus about this kingdom oh, glorify your name come by without money and without price Glorify your name, Jesus. And if you but reach out and touch God, right now, you can step into that kingdom. You can step into that kingdom. What are you hoping for? What are you waiting for? What are you holding on to? What is out there in the world that is still for you? Come on. What is out there in the world that is still for you? Come on. God is calling you by name. Can I invite everyone to stand right now as somebody ponders their decision about the kingdom of God to yield their lives. Let us begin to touch God right now on their behalf. Saints of God, saints of God, turn to your neighbor and say, possess ye the kingdom. Possess ye the kingdom. Possess ye the kingdom. Glorify your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who is here that is hungry and thirsty for righteousness? 
the king is here who is here that knows that you need to surrender to the king Ah, hallelujah to God that you're living in the realm of the Suda ruler. Ah, glorify your name because the devil will not have dominion for very long. Ah, glorify your name. And even now, his dominion is subjected to this kingdom. You can, through the name of Jesus, come against principalities. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you are here today, you have heard the word of God. Amen. Indeed, we invite you to come. Be a part of the kingdom of God. Amen. There's only one way to be a part of that kingdom. You need to repent of your sins. Amen. You need to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And you need to be baptized in Jesus' name for the remissions of your sins. Amen. So we invite you to come. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if there's someone beside you, please ask them. Amen. Invite them to come. Amen. Walk with them if you have to. Amen. If they are not willing to come, pray with them where they are. Hallelujah. Amen. If you want to be a part of the kingdom of God, the true kingdom of God, hallelujah, come. Hallelujah. Come to Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't wait. Amen. Come to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Yes, come to Jesus. Hallelujah. He that an, hath an ear, let him hear. Hallelujah. Come unto Jesus. Come, we beg you, come to him. Be a part of his kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going just to invite us to stand and we are going to pray. Amen. Amen. We are going to pray. Amen. If you can't stand, we, un we will we understand what that some of us can't stand. But if you can stand, we're going to invite you to stand. And we're just going to pray. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for speaking, Lord Jesus, to our hearts, for allowing us the opportunity to hear God. Hallelujah. The different kingdoms. Hallelujah. That you know. Hallelujah. Are active even now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for opening up our understanding to the fact that if we want to be a part of your kingdom, hallelujah, that we must be saved and that we must seek that kingdom out. Thank you, Lord, for allowing those of us who did not understand that some of the things that we do, hallelujah, we were not truly doing right by you for we are a part of such a great kingdom God and we have power with you Jesus the true king and we must exercise that power Lord hallelujah and not behave as those who are without understanding those who are not children of the most high God but we thank you today for revealing to us your word and so, God, we pray that as we go, we will leave with this understanding. And that, Lord Jesus, we will operate in that understanding today. Breathe upon those who have responded to your word. Who have decided to follow you and to be a part of your kingdom. 
We pray that indeed, Lord Jesus, you will transform their lives this afternoon in Jesus' name. Let's all say in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, to Jesus I surrender all to Him I freely give I will ever love and trust Him in His presence Oh, 